Uh, yeah, off of Forest Road 357, you got the, uh, this nice new trailhead with the pit toilet, loading or an unloading dock. That's pretty nice. People, the, the fingers. So what I was going to talk about is why on all these Facebook pages, people are asking like, what tire should I run? And then you got like the loyal to, loyalist of the D606. Oh my God, that's the best tire since sliced bread. And admittedly, I have never run that tire, but at the same time, I'm not that interested in that tire. It's just I've heard from other people that ride stuff like I do. <laughs> it's like <laughs> people that have run the D606 that you know I would say are more aggressive riders. They're like it stinks off road. But then you have like this whole set of especially moto vloggers that are like the D606. It's the best tire ever for road and dirt well i don't know for the cost of the tire like 90 100 bucks it, uh, no it's not you run the kenda k270 i've done single track atv trails this stuff and it grips just fine you know, and uh, you know, you run like 15 PSI if you're running tubes, or I run tubeless, so, and it's a pretty stiff carcass, so you can probably get away even with a tube running a little less, but you know, safe bet's 15. I've never had a pinch flat with 15 PSI. I know a lot of a lot of these people though they, they they pump up their tires to like 30 psi. I'm like 30 psi. What the heck are you doing? I air down when I get to the trail. I air it down to 20. You air it down to 20? What? <laughs> I mean, yeah, 20, you can do a lot of this stuff, but you're making it harder on yourself. 15 seems to be good for me for road and out here. I, I don't know. So a bike like this, a bike like my XR, both I have tubeless system in it from NewTek, and I run typically like 10. And a lot of people would consider that high. The, the tubeless crowd would consider that pretty high. But I like going pounding through stuff. I just don't want to ding a rim, so... I tend to run a little higher. Now I have run five in the rear. And yeah, you'll grip a lot better. Yeah, I don't know what the fascination is is with asking online, like, what tires do you run? Just buy some tires and put them on your bike and see. I mean, you're the one that's going to know your riding style. This all comes back to how do you ride? What are you riding? We can't. What type of terrain? We can't tell that for, about you from, hey, what tires do you run? I mean, I'm in Colorado. I'm running, you know, you watch a lot of my videos. I'm mostly on dirt, you know, so K270 works for me for a good, if you want a dual sport tire, it seems to be pretty long lasting. Everyone that rides acts like, you know, oh man, my tires wore out a thousand miles. Oh no, it's like, well, you know, that's the nature of the beast, really. I don't know, trying to get the max. The only way I could see you gain the maximum out of your tire is if you're doing, like, long distance. Like, you're going to ride from Colorado to Alaska, you know. But then you should just be planning, like, I'm going to need tires around this spot, around this spot, and just get get that many miles out and just toss on some fresh pair. And it's just part of the expense of doing the trip, you know. You're doing a huge trip. It's not cheap anyways. <laughs> With the time off work, most likely, unless you're retired uh, and... 
you know, food and lodging and, I mean, even if you're camping a lot of it, you're still going to do some hotels. So, what's spending another... If you do the K270, it's like 50 bucks a tire, 60 bucks a tire, you know. You can get, last time I looked at a D606, it was like 130 or 120, and I was like, are you kidding? Hell no. I mean, I would like to try one to bring it to you guys and gals, uh, what my opinions are on, on the XR650R, but... Not at those prices. I mean, there's so many other tires, and I personally don't worry about DOT. Everyone worries about DOT. DOT's a safety standard. You know, for me, if the tire can be running Baja at 100 miles an hour across the desert, getting pounded, it's going to go down the street just fine. <laughs> Now, you're going to say, well, there's going to be braking differences, you know, your stopping is going to be different due to the lugs, because, you know, lugs on off-road tires can be longer versus on-road, and the spacing and all that. Well, okay, I'll probably give you that, but for most people on the bike, that's not really going to be your concern when you're on the road a little bit. I mean, unless you're always on the road, then, well, again, I'll just go back to, you can get a K270. Man, I should be getting paid by Kinda. <laughs> you should be, I know. I've posted up about the running the Sedona MX907. They wear out quick, but man, they're a sticky tire, and they work good in the sand due to the shape of the unique shape of the tread, they seem to work pretty dang good. Cool, cool tread pattern, and they work. So, yeah, I, I just don't know what people are. Why they always ask that? Why that's why? Just buy a tire and try it. Worst case is you don't like it and you get a different tire, right? So if you want to try the D606, try the D606. You're the only one outside of the friends you probably might ride with that know what type of terrain you're riding that what will work. You know, what works here might not work, say, on the East Coast in a lot of more, like, clay or muddy situations where other tires, like MT-43 is DOT approved. It's a Trials DOT tire. It works here just fine, but we don't have a lot of mud. So some people say, well, it's kind of sketchy going downhill. I, yeah. I guess a little bit it is, but it's not, like, god-awful. <laughs> I mean, maybe if you're at race speed, yeah, it's probably not going to slow you down as quick as you'd like. But if you're just a casual trail rider, you're going to be just fine with it. it, it more or less, you're going to have to get used to the turning, like going around these corners. And it's not a problem. It's just the square profile is a little different. And you'll get around the corner. You just have to trust the tire. And if you need to, you just turn the throttle more. And you can kind of drift around corners. Just a tip if you're running, going to run the MT-43. The MT-43 is also not a heavy carcass, so if you were to get a flat tire on one of those, you'd know it, because it's limp as can be. I mean, it's so limp, you might as well not even go home to your wife. That's how limp it is. But uh, Kinda K270, uh, Desert IT, which isn't DOT, uh, many other tires, probably D606, have really thick sidewalls, really stiff carcass, and I've had zero PSI in a K270 and didn't really know it. It's that thick, so I mean, you could potentially have a flat tire and not even know, <laughs> and just probably, and probably just be just fine running back to uh, 
you know, camp or your vehicle or home or whatever, you know? Well, I mean, once you do know it's flat, you probably just take it easy. 